Um, speaking of when we spoke to Josh Kando after the game, he almost, almost as, as emotional as Josh can sound, he almost sounded emotional about getting to finish uh, a game um, from a health standpoint. What was that like watching him? And, you know, I know you guys haven't been here throughout his whole career, but you've seen some of what he's gone through. Uh, how, how, did, how was that for you as his position coach? Well, you know, I was excited for Josh just to have an opportunity to get back. You know, I know, uh, you know, when he got hurt in the first game, you know, he kind of feared the worst, you know, when, when he was down on the ground and, you know, right afterwards. And then, you know, when he found out that he was going to have an opportunity to be back and, you know, and he worked so hard in the rehab process and uh, just go out and play well, uh, like I felt like he did on, on Saturday night, and then to finish the game and get a win. I think for him it was just emotional because it has been a long journey back for him from, from a year ago when he got hurt, and he's kind of been injured riddled since he's been here so uh, you know I just feel like you know I just actually was talking to him a few minutes ago and I think just that that feeling of hey you know what I, I was able to, to play and I feel good and, and prepare for the next opponent I think it was just a big step in, in his overall process as, as he's trying to get himself back Hey, Coach, I want to ask you about the, uh, I'm sure much to your chagrin, a couple of the punts that happened during the game uh, were, were bounced, and you guys lost a lot of field position on those. I guess can you tell us kind of what happened there, and I guess what will you be doing this week to make sure that doesn't happen down the road? Yeah, no, the, you know, the uh, we did lose some some considerable field position, uh, letting the ball hit the ground. Um, you know, I thought Keyshawn did a lot of really good things in, in his first opportunity to be back there returning both kickoffs and, and punts. Uh, the decision making in a couple of times, you know, those are things that we got to get better at. Uh, first of all, we can't let the ball hit the ground. We got to field all possible kicks that we, we possibly can because uh, we lost some, some significant yardage there. And then, you know, the first series of the game, you know, we put the offense in a tough spot. Uh, you know, our, our rule is that we're not going to catch it inside the seven. And, and uh, you know, I think we lost where we were on the field a little bit and caught it about the five. And it just set up things uh, for, for a bad first series. Uh, you know, for us, to, that's not where we want our offense to be able to take the field. Um, so, uh, you know, those are things that, that we work on and we're going to correct, and, and Keyshawn will get better at. I have no uh, doubt in my mind about that. And, um, you know, we're going to do a better job coaching it as well. So, um, you know, but those are, are certainly things that we can't give away that much hidden yardage and that much field position. Did uh, Ryan tell you if you had any technical things, or is there anything that um, went wrong that led to his a couple of missed kicks? Uh, you know, I know that he didn't hit the ball uh, the way obviously he wanted to on the extra point. Um, you know, I, he just said he said it came off of his his foot poorly. Um, you know, which unfortunately at times does happen. Uh, the missed field goal, he just pushed it a little bit, um, but you know, I. Ryan's been really, really good uh, all the way through fall camp and, and through the couple weeks that, that uh, led up to that Miami game. Had another solid week last week. So uh, I'm, I'm going to look at that as a little bit more of an anomaly. Um, and, uh, you know, I have full faith that he's going to be ready to roll and, and good going forward. Coach, you see so many freshmen that are kind of able to be plugged in to play defensive back or linebacker. You know, Odell is kind of flush with bodies at defensive tackle. I mean, is it just a difficult thing to be able to find kids that are ready day one to come play defensive end? Is there something about the, the physical nature of that position that just makes it difficult to find instant sort of uh, contributors? Well, you know, I, th I think, you know, we're, we got – uh, three guys that are kind of in the rotation at defensive end that are young, uh, Quayshon, uh, Derek, and, and, and Josh Griffith. And, uh, you know, I, I think anytime you're playing on the defensive line, you know, the, it takes a little bit of time to, to develop the skill set that it's going to take to be impactful. Um, you know, and, and I think with every one of those guys, every rep they take, you know, they're going to be able to, to learn and grow and, and get better. Um, you know, but I don't think it's a coincidence that, that our two older guys, uh, Jay Rob and, and Kando, are the ones that look more polished out there. Um, and I think it's partly because they have four and five years of experience uh, doing what they do, and, and we're going to continue to grow those young guys and, and uh, get them better with every game. And, uh, you know, hopefully at the, at the end of the year we see we're a lot deeper and, and um, have a lot more guys that we feel like can seamlessly come in and play. 
Coach, we saw Keyshawn had the same kind of success on returns that Travis has had early on. How much is that a testament to their ability and then also to the scheme that the guys up front are doing doing their job? Well, you know, it all goes hand in hand. I mean, obviously, you got to have a good returner to make any of it work. And, uh, you know, both Travis and, and Keyshawn, in my mind, are, are good returners. Uh, but more importantly than, than – that at times is the great job that people have to do blocking. You know, uh, the uh, and, and regardless of what the scheme is, I mean, the guys um, have to do a good job in terms of getting their bodies on on the right guys and, and creating space for the returner. And uh, you know, I think we have really good buy-in from the people who are who are on the kickoff return unit. Um, that yeah, they might not be the ones getting their their name in the paper and, and kind of some of the accolades, but they really do a good job of buying into their role and responsibility. And and uh, we spend a lot of time on the fundamentals of, of blocking on kickoff return, and I think some of that's starting to show up, and uh, we're pretty close to, to getting one popped out of there, I feel like. So uh, we're just going to keep working at it and, uh, and see where it's going to be going over the next uh, few games. Going back to that question of, or about the Keyshawn Field and the punt inside the 10, um, is the seven yard line like a hard, hard, fast rule, or is there any wiggle room? Because it seemed like if he makes that one guy miss, he's got a potential for a huge, huge return there. Is there is there any trust that you develop with a return guy, or is it a hard and fast? Uh, a little of both. I mean, it, it's it's hard and fast from the standpoint of we want them to have a place on the field where they feel like they can put their heels on the ground and make an easy decision. If the ball's over their head. They're not going to field it if the ball is in a position where they can move forward on the ball. Then, then go ahead and go with it, um, because the, the hardest ones are the ones that are kicked a little bit over your head where you lose track of where you're on the field. Um, but with that being said, there is a little bit of judgment in there, uh, especially balls that are on the ground. You know, whether you because there is the potential on all those balls that are rolling that they could stop inside the five. So there is some judgment that that we allow there. Uh, but we try to make the rules as, as black and white as, as possible in terms of when to and when not to. So there's not a lot of gray for the player, you know. And, I, and that's really in everything that we do is is we want to try to take the gray out of it and the indecision out of things and, and make it as as hard and fast as we possibly can. Next would be Jerry Coach Hey, Coach, uh, on your uh, pass rush this year, uh, looking at ends in your front. Um, can you evaluate it and where you see that you might get some uh, help during the year? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, there, there's a lot of layers uh, to it always. I mean, some of it is um, schematic in terms of making, you know, one game we played a three-man front versus a four-man front. So th that's different in terms of how you rush the passer. Um, you know, some of it is our guys being able to transition um, and, and get off blocks uh, quicker. Um, some of it has to do with coverage schemes. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different layers as to sometimes why you create pressure. Sometimes it's great coverage that creates pressure. Sometimes it's winning a one-on-one -on -one that creates pressure. Sometimes it's a, 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 a blitz or, or design pressure that creates it. Um, so they all got to work hand in hand. But you know, it's something that I can tell you that we work every single day in, in pass rush uh, to try to become more efficient in everything that we do. And uh, you know, I know our guys are working really hard at it. Having Kando back helps. Um, I did feel more four man pass rush uh, this past game than than we had felt in the first couple games. And it's just something that we're going to have to continue to develop and and. Uh, find ways within the scheme to help our guys when we have the opportunity, whether that's stunning the line or, or bringing extra guys in, in the pressure. Um, but we're going to have to create the one-on-ones to, to give ourselves an opportunity. And that's that's something we're constantly evaluating as, as we've been kind of working through this. All right. Thank you, Joe.